reconnecting with my friend Zuzu Mansoor. She is such a rock star. You are such a rock star. It is great to see your beautiful face. Um, um, awesome. It's been too long. I know. I'm so happy to see your face. You look beautiful as always. And I'm just, I'm happy to see you. I, I'm I so look better today. Me. I'll tell you why. I've got oh. my wild woman shirt on <laughs> and of course, Libations in my fabulous Soraya mug. So just hang on, let me take a sip here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you guys, by the way, have the most splendid merch. Um, very into the merch. Uh, I have a bunch of different Soraya shirts. I have the tank and uh, stuff is so great. You guys have like candles and Christmas ornaments and all kinds of great stuff on your website. It's incredible. You know, our uh, two of our members, uh, Brianna and Travis, are both have their own little like art businesses as well on the side. Wow, and really, we're going at it during you know quarantine because we had all this time. So they're like, let's make some lip soaps for tight lip. That was Brianna's. Yes, idea. yes, I love those. I have to get. I need. A, I need the lips. I need the lips. I love the lips. I saw the lips. No, you'll on your get all of it. Um, so I wanted to let's start by talking about yeah. tight lip. You, by the way, were a band that. Uh, I mean, this has just been a crazy year. Um, some of our artists got super depressed, which is understandable. Life turns completely on a dime. You guys, I felt though, kept it so incredibly optimistic. And I felt that you took opportunities that you may not have had to really connect with your fan base. I saw that with a lot of WDHA listeners because um, you have such a loyal fan base of people that love Soraya, that love the band. So talk to me a little bit about, as I call it, turning obstacle into opportunity. And how did you guys decide to get on this super positive track and just be like, you know what? We can't do this, but let's do that instead. Yeah, I appreciate that you noticed it. I honestly, um, I tend to get very dark once I go dark um, and I didn't have, I won't allow that to happen. And um, so my way of doing that, this band has given me a lot of purpose aside from creativity as a great outlet and meeting great people. And um, as soon as it went down, we were already in Vegas on our way to our release show for Dig Your Roots, as you know, um, had just released March 13th, which was the pandemic was announced that Tuesday before on the 10th. So um, already people were calling me like, when are you coming home? You might not make it home. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? You know, and I knew I was so upset about that, just that part of it that I thought, it just felt strange, like that strange like feeling. And I, I knew the first thing I thought was we have to stay connected. I have to stay connected to my band. We have to stay connected to the fans because this is all, we all felt, we all went through this like collective trauma. I feel like that we didn't know what was happening because nothing like it happened before in any of our lifetimes. You know, we hadn't lived through that. And I don't know where that thought came from. I always think it's like, you know, a higher, you know, being um, lets me know like what we have to do. And my whole purpose was to stay connected at that point. And all I kept saying, we still did our, our release show. We did a live stream. <laughs> it was awful, but we did it. We didn't know sound anything, but we did it that Friday, the 20th of March uh, from our Philadelphia rehearsal space. And I just told everybody we got to stay connected. And so every week we decided, we started doing cover songs just to stay connected and my uh my bassist and co-writer travis was like let's do songs we never get to do on tour let's take this opportunity we can't see each other um let's let's like i'll record something and you sing to it and then i'll put it together and so we started doing one and dones and then we just started yep. doing facebook lives and so many people responded and just said we love seeing you guys laugh it makes us laugh please keep doing this like it really was other people communicating to me to keep connected from that original thought so i that kept us going. I mean, your your fan base alone, like the DHA listeners really embraced us and gave us hope. They like, love you. They're a wild, fun group and they love you and yeah. they feel connected because you did stuff with us. Yeah. You know, traditionally when we have new artists that connect with our listeners, we have them at the station or we put them in a room and we get, get an intimate crowd or whatever. And we couldn't do that. Yeah. So you were great doing Zooms or Zooming in a happy hour or just being on the page you know, interacting with people, which is a huge deal when everybody's stuck together, you know, in a lockdown. All right. So then we get, then tight lipped. I mean, what an amazing surprise. You know, we heard that it was coming towards the end of the year. First of all, what a great song. It's all about empowerment. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. The video is incredible. We'll talk about that in a few. Um, so talk to me about putting together that song. Where did it come from? How was it born? Uh, well, it was last January, January of 2020, before anything hit. Uh, Travis and I sat down. He was listening to certain like things that he normally didn't listen to. I was listening to like my favorite 90s song, like like throwback stuff. And we just came together at a really cool time. And I had been reading, I had this thought, like, I never read Shakespeare. I never liked Shakespeare. I'm going to try to read Shakespeare. I'm just going to try and better myself, whatever. And I was reading about Ophelia and I thought she drowned herself at the end. And I was like, what, what's that message about? So I was like, I really want to revive Ophelia. And I say that in the lyric at the, I wanted the song to start out. And I thought it's, it's just such a thing that I've always kept my mouth shut about things I really want. Like I feel like out of being polite or out of being like grateful, you know, there's a weird line there. So I've always been like, thank you. Okay. That's good. And I, what I've really wanted to say is no, I want this. And you know, we're taught that that's somehow not, appropriate or polite and i know absolutely like, oh. absolutely especially yeah, so I, especially as ladies you yeah. know sometimes if we're louder as ladies it's perceived as being bah, 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 you know something else and yeah. um yeah as soon as i heard it i was like this is my theme song i refuse to be tight-lipped not happening overdone and it also was and i say this you know to artists that make songs like this a battle cry Yes. It was a great battle, great battle cry song for people who um, are just like, you know what? I've kind of had enough. I'm feeling frustrated. And I think everybody felt a little bit of that, especially this year. Yes. And um, it was just, I think it was just the perfect storm and such a dynamite tune. First of all, it has a great, your vocals are incredible on it. I love your vocals on it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there's just so much passion, soul edge grit you know great gritty vocals but then there's the break in the middle that's very poppy you know ooh, and it all it kind of harkens back to you know brighter days you know and it's just yeah. it, it there's just such a great dynamic in the song yeah thank you i mean that's a lot of just listening to like really great songs and they end up spouting out later in different songs and we we consciously were just like we're tired of writing the same old bridge say here's a guitar solo here's where this goes i'm like let's do something different he's like and he had this whole idea um and it was actually very like like i'd say even 80s metal sounding when we first did it and then we got it into steven and then we got it into the producer and it changed like 15 times and it became what it did the only yeah. thing that's still the same is the ooze in there and that's yeah. it but it's good. I mean, it came out how it was supposed to. It was a great collaborative effort. And and, and very embraced, by the way, very embraced by radio, very embraced by the fans. I mean, it was something that I think kind of shot you guys, you know, shot you guys out of the canon, you know, at a time where people want to be shot out of the canon because everybody's looking to kind of get back to some sense of normalcy in life. Oh, and there's a B side. The B side is great, too, <laughs> because I love the cover yes. of Aerosmith's Angel. Um, so tell me how you decided to to do that cover. You do it with your label mate. Yes, um, Jesse Wagner. Jesse yeah. Wagner. She's phenomenal. I mean, my gosh, she's played with Steven Van Zandt and Lenny Kravitz. And um, she's such a, such a star, such a big presence. Yep. So how did you two get together and how did you get decide that this was going to be a great tune for you? It's funny. Uh, I met her a few times just going to see Steven play because I always go to see him play, whether he's playing with Bruce or he's playing with the Disciples of Soul. I always go see him play when he's local. And I talked to her a number of times before she even did her solo project with, with Steven's label. And um, as she was doing it, she wanted to talk to me about uh, what it's like to talk to like the Orchard and different you know groups in, within the label. And so we were talking and I was just giving her some advice of what works and what doesn't work for me. And at the end of our phone call, she said, we should duet together sometime. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, I don't really do that. And I, was, and I got off the phone. I was like, why would I say that to somebody? Like, you know, it's one of those things you're like, why did I open? Why did I say that? <laughs> so I thought about it. Literally, I went in the shower the next day. I thought about it. And I called her. I was like, you know what? Let's, why don't you send me any song you haven't done with another artist? Any song that you've wanted to do, you wish you could do, you wish you sang a lead vocal on. I said, just email it to me. And she did. And it was like 10 songs. And we had originally picked another song, but then Angel was a song that I had sung on the boardwalk when I was a kid. And I, I, oh, I kill, it was terrible. So I was like, you know what? I want to re-sing this song. What do you think about doing Angel? And then we just worked it out together when she came in the room. And, you know, she's, as a singer, as a lead singer, 
she's quite a presence to be next to. And you have to be pretty confident what you do to stand next to Jessie because Jessie's such a powerhouse on her own. And she has a natural way of singing that she doesn't even need to hear it. And she's singing it already. I need to hear something like 50 times. And I'm like, I can do this, you know? So well, when you watch the video for the song and the two of you are together, the presence of the two of you is really amazing. I mean, I think the two of you are just perfect together and it's, it's a big, it's a big giant female vocal presence, um, especially in the video, the visual to go along, you know, with hearing it um, is just incredible. So for those of you who have not Googled it yet, please Google it because you will absolutely <laughs> love it. But yeah, she's, she's just absolutely dynamite. And um, exciting for you is that you have shows coming up because you're a live band, live band, live band, live band. And we've got one coming in June. I want everybody to know June 18th, Bowery Electric, New York City. Now there are two shows on the 18th. Yes. The second one is completely cooked. It's sold out. The first one um, is close to being sold out. So we would encourage people to get tickets. You know, you can go find the Bowery, you know, Bowery online, or you can go to the Soraya site and click on their tour dates. So what do you think it's going to feel like being back on stage and back in front of a crowd and not have it sort of be, you know, um, you know, just kind of a one-off or, you know, knowing that, that, that touring and the show thing is, is coming back out and um, you guys are, are getting ready to go. It's funny. I, I, I'm glad you asked me that because there's a little bit of stress associated with it because it's definitely exciting and I'm thrilled. And when it first occurred, I was kind of like, that's not going to happen. I'm, I'm in that frame of mind. It's like, yeah, okay, we'll book it. That's not going to happen. And we, because we've had that for so long. And had somebody told me at the beginning of, of, of all of this that we would be this long without shows, I would have never thought that was true. But, um, you know, it's been like almost a year and a half. So that we've, before we've played in front of people. So um, I'm very excited about it. And I'm also a little, um, not stressed about the show, but just about how to book looking forward, because even the promoters are calling us going like, well, we're going to do this July, but we're going to move it to November. And then the other one, we're moving to next July. And I'm like, what is going on? Nobody knows what to do. Like, you know what I mean? Right. But, um, but it's all happening. And I'm excited. Um, I'm not as worried as if we'd done it earlier, which um, we were early, offered some earlier shows. And I said, no, just out of fear, the vaccinations were just starting. And I feel like at this point, by, I thought by about June, July, people would, if they wanted it, would have got it. So then they have the freedom to take the show or not. Plus you're afraid that the tickets aren't going to sell if people aren't ready to go back. And so, but I'm excited about it. I'm really, I go between being like, I can't wait to like going like, how can I make this really special to going, it's just another show to going like, it's just going to be like riding a bike. So I, I go, know it's yeah. crazy because it almost feels new again. Doesn't yeah. it almost feel like a new, like a whole new kind of experience? It feels like a new experience for me too, you know, and thinking yeah. about getting out there and going to shows and there is that, you know, sense of excitement, but then there's also that sense of like, wow, oh my gosh, you know, so it is, yep. it's almost like it's, it's spanking brand new. And then I saw some dates for, did I see dates for Sweden on your website? Are you guys going yeah. overseas? Wow. Now that's going to be exciting. That still, uh, I think it's confirmed, but I'm, I'm confirming it hundred percent this weekend. Wow. Um, but yes. We're supposed, we moved that tour five times. We had it for last June. Then we moved it to fall hopeful and Sweden had opened up in fall, which was before they closed up again. So it was weird. So we didn't go in the fall. Then we rescheduled actually four times. We rescheduled to April and now we're going in October. So wow, that's going to yeah. be so exciting. Never so been. exciting. And I wanted to talk to you too about new music. Um, so did you get a different perspective on releasing new music when you were in lockdown? Like, how are you going to do it? Are you thinking of doing, you know, a couple of tunes coming out at the same time or full albums, or maybe, you know, some artists are like, you know, I'm doing song by song. I don't feel the need to have to do a whole. And then I've spoken to other bands that are like, no, we're an album making band. We're a top to bottom band. We feel it's an experience. It's a journey for our fans. So everybody kind of has a different take on how they're going to present their art. I think it's what you want and what you feel. So I know that the fans would just be, you know, killing me if I didn't ask you how much more new music we're going to get. What are we going to get? And when are we going to get what we're going to get? <laughs> it's so, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate that everybody also has their own opinions about that because I think coming out of this, that's kind of what I feel like. We didn't even release 
we released like two new songs aside from the album while we're in quarantine. And the one, the Christmas one, we, we didn't even intend. That was a fan only thing. And the label said, hey, you want us to put this out? And we're like, okay. Because you know, we're like, that's not a bad idea. Um, so we released a lot of music during quarantine. We also wrote almost a full album, if not more than that, of songs that I would put on an album during quarantine. Um, and now I'm kind of at this point where we're evaluating are these songs that we want to put out or not. And we definitely have a, a full album at this point. Um, very diverse, very diverse songs. I wanted to make sure they weren't all quarantine songs, you know what right, I mean? Right, like, right. About what was going on. Right. Um, and, you know, the, actually just the other day, and I didn't really tell anybody this. So uh, we sent two single possibilities to Steven and he sent back notes. So we have a co-write now with, uh, which is probably going to be the next single. But the single will come out in advance of the full album. So it's not like a, like we released Tight Lip by itself. That'll be on the album. But now we have a full album of songs that we also have to get approved first. So, um, but yeah, but we already have a, a new single. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be able to come out this year. I was shooting for this year. But um, I want to take my time with it, too, because it's a special song. So, uh, so we'll see. But definitely new music by, by early next year, if not by late this year. Yeah, and we'll tease. We'll tease. at all the shows. We we one of the things we really missed uh, TC was going on the road and playing the new songs for fans and getting the feedback because that's what we used to do. We didn't get to do that with Tight Lipped, but um, we'll be playing some at the New York show and at all the shows coming up that piecemeal are starting to add up. So. And June 18th, by the way, we want to let people know tickets for the early show, which, which is great. I kind of like the early show too. An early show is good. You know, you, you get in early, um, you can get into the city, you can have a cocktail, you can check out the band, then you're out early, you know, so don't be like, oh, early show. I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm just getting older, but I don't mind the early shows as much as I used to. I kind of like them. No. And it's all over by 11, 1115. The first Perfect. one is 730 to 830. And then the second one is 9.30 to 11. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. And you know what? I can't wait to see you in person. It's funny because I thought about it today because I feel like I've known you now for a while, but it's always been behind a computer screen. And I was like, I've never really hung with Zuzu, but you're no. such a warm, open person that I feel like you're a friend, you know, and we've, we've communicated multiple, multiple times. So I, it kind of hit me that we've never actually sat in a room together have we no and you're like my sister in rock like your I know. appreciation of music is crazy like mine. so I, I always whenever there's a rock another female who loves the rock and roll like I love it like Brianna loves it like that I love it like that you love it like that it's it's cool so I feel like we're already in that realm so I can't wait to give you a hug in person yeah me too and thank you so much for being one of my and one of our favorite queens of noise <laughs> I'm I'm honored, honestly. It's it's an honor. And you guys have got us through one of the hardest times for all of us. So thank you. And ditto, ditto. Yeah. Zuzu, thank you so much for joining me on Reconnect. Love uh, you. It was my pleasure. Love you, TC. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway. Online at DoverDodge.com. Thank you.